afternoon. I'm Karen Drew. If you haven't voted, there is still time. The polls in Michigan are open for another four hours, and we have seen some long lines in Metro Detroit and around the country. We have team coverage this afternoon with Rhonda Walker in New York. Help me Hank monitoring local polling places. Paula Tutman with some very personal stories from people who don't take voting for granted, and we start with Devin Skillion. And Devin, a very big day. Well, it sure is, Karen. Finally, the end of the line for campaigns and candidates and voters, of course, alike. Uh, the polls opened nine hours ago for an election day like well, none that most of us have really ever seen before. Uh, there were so many voters across Metro Detroit ready when the polls opened right as they opened this morning. Long lines formed early at precincts here in Detroit and across the suburbs. There have been some reports of some glitches with voting machines, though no uh, major problems to report this afternoon. Local races and ballot issues have brought out voters certainly, but it's the top of the ticket getting the most attention. The candidates vote themselves voted this morning. Democrat Hillary Clinton was first to cast her ballot. Many people are counting on the outcome of this election, what it means for our country, and I'll do the very best I can if I'm fortunate enough to, to win today. There you see her joined by her husband who voted her precinct near their home in New York a few hours later. Uh, near his home in Manhattan, Donald Trump voted and commented briefly for reporters about how he feels on this election day. Very good. Right now, there you see accompanied by his wife Melania and their daughter Ivanka. Uh, his final campaign stop of the entire campaign was late last night right here in Michigan. It was in Grand Rapids. Both presidential candidates made major late pushes to try to win votes in our state. Michigan looms very large heading into tonight. From the national perspective, there's also a possibility Democrats could take control of the U.S. Senate, resting it away from the Republicans. The strength of the candidates, uh, Clinton and Trump, could determine which way the Senate vote goes tonight. A lot to keep track of today. I will tell you, Karen, quickly, uh, we some precincts are telling us they could be seeing record turnout today in the Detroit metro area. So uh, a lot of people very engaged in this election that we thought maybe might turn off a lot of voters mm -hmm. and keep them home. So far, the polls are busy. Back to you. All right, thank you very much, mm -hmm. Devin. And our Help Me Hank election hotline has been open all day long, giving you a chance to report any polling place problems. Local force Hank Winchester has been tracking down those complaints. And so far, I understand, Hank, the news is encouraging. What have you been hearing? And that's right, Karen. Just as Devin said, some minor glitches. We noticed one this morning at the Northwest Activity Center in Detroit, but that issue was repaired quickly. We're here right now at Chrysler Elementary School in Detroit. We're here because this morning, this is one of those districts where the lines were long all the way down the street. Some people uh, leaving because they didn't want to wait any longer. You're looking at some VO of people voting, uh, some video rather, of people voting at different locations across Metro Detroit. Again, we've only been hearing about some minor glitches uh, causing some issues with people uh, having to wait longer than expected. A few machines were not accepting the ballots, but those machines were changed out quickly and those issues were resolved. We did have an opportunity to speak with the executive director of the NAACP as a team uh, working right now to hear about any complaints or concerns. And then we also talked to voters as they made their way out of Chrysler today. Here's what they had to say. Our election line has been up and running since 6 a.m. this morning. Uh, mostly individuals are concerned about where do I go vote, so we're instructing them on their proper polling locations. Uh, but we have been having um, more than a few instances on polling equipment not operating properly, uh, which is in turn creating long lines. We heard about a few glitches with different machines, not counting votes. You didn't see or encounter anything like that? No, I did not. Everything went quite well, actually. So the main story from people, the main complaint, long lines, but that's actually really good news because obviously we want as many people to get out there and vote as possible. An important reminder for everybody, even though the polls close at 8 o'clock, if you are in line by 8 o'clock, it will make sure you have an opportunity to cast your vote. We're live here tonight in Detroit. Karen, back to you. All right, thank you very much, Hank. And the Help Me Hank volunteers are standing by right now to take your calls through 8 p.m. when those polls close. So if you spot any problems, call 313-298-WDIV. The number on your screen right there, 313-298-WDIV, and we will check them out.
The big race today is at the top of the ballot. Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump. That battle will be decided based on electoral votes in key battleground states, including here in Michigan. Our Rhonda Walker joins us now from NBC Election Headquarters in New York to show us exactly what we need to be looking out for tonight. Good afternoon, Rhonda. A good afternoon to you, Karen. And there are certain things that we should be watching out for as we lead into really getting those poll results in. First, let me set the stage where I am at NBC's Democracy Plaza in New York, where we will watch the electoral votes begin to count their way up of Rockefeller Center. But there are some key things to watch out for today in terms of specific states that may be called rather early one way or another that could even make the decision prior to even all of the polls and results being counted in Michigan. So I think it was today's show, Savannah Guthrie, that put all the expectations into perspective. The only thing we have learned about this election is to expect the unexpected. I feel like this is one of those campaigns where all the conventional wisdom has been upended. And I think anything can happen tonight. If there were to be a real surprise tonight, if Donald Trump were to kind of go against all that conventional wisdom and prevail, I bet you anything Michigan would be a big part of that story. Officially, it won't happen till after 11 o'clock. NBC's moderator of Meet the Press, Chuck Todd, will have his eye out for a few key demographics as the numbers come in. Looking for the most is this college-educated white voter. Mitt Romney won them. Hillary Clinton was winning them in our last poll. If she wins them by the margin that we show, this could be a, we could be underestimating the size of Clinton's victory. As you're watching the election results come in, what's that one state that you're kind of looking at going, I want to see what happens here? And well, why? you know, there's a couple, but I think two states, I'll give you two states, Florida and North Carolina. The polls close relatively early on the East Coast, of course, but we may not know the result for a while because they are razor thin and they're incredibly consequential. Before the polls close in Michigan, we may know a lot about Florida, Ohio, and North Carolina. Carolina, number, that, that's number one. And if we don't know by the time Michigan polls close, then we are in for an extraordinary long night. So there's a lot to watch and a lot to think about as all of those election returns come in. Coming up at five, we're going to take a closer look at how unprecedented this election has been. Some pivotal key moments that we're going to zero in on that could have been the thing that made or broke any of the candidates chances at being our next president. So we'll take a closer look at that coming up at five. Karen, back to you. All right, Rhonda Walker reporting live from New York. Thank you very much, Rhonda. Obviously, voter turnout is a huge issue today. Millions of people will line up to vote today, and each one has a story about why they're casting their ballot. Some people have truly amazing stories because voting is so important to them. Paula Tutman found who is going to great lengths to vote on this day and wanted to share their stories. Paula. Well, you know, Karen, I've talked to a lot of people who have a variety of reasons for not voting. But if you're thinking about not voting, take a look at this story and then tell me whether or not you still feel the same way. For Cassandra, every step is both a challenge and a triumph. At only 62 years old, she needs two knee replacement operations. When it's cold and rainy and her knees are swollen, every inch, every foot, every yard is painful. And yet, today, she is walking nearly a mile to get to the polls. Why don't you drive? I don't have a car. I just voted. There is no such thing as dash in, get it done, dash out. Physically, it would be easy for her to stay home, but history makes it easier for her to vote. It really does matter. You know, our forefathers and ancestors fought for us to be able to vote. Everyone should get out and vote. A lot of people died for this. A lot. A lot. I've certainly not missed voting. I don't think I've missed volunteering for an election either. Dessa would never consider not voting either. But she knows that the disability that keeps people from voting is not always physical. People have all sorts of barriers to voting, uh, some of which I think we can work to eliminate. It's kind of normal everyday things like childcare, transportation, work schedule. Um, all of those things can be barriers to people voting. Though born without femurs, she knows what it's like when there are physical barriers. I have voted in places before where the accessible door was locked. Um, where there were steps to the entrance or where the accessible voting machines were broken. When we met her at a polling place today, she was not there to vote. She was there to volunteer. 
She will vote after she makes sure as many people as possible understand their own voice and their own power. If you don't vote, somebody else's voice is louder than yours and they're dictating what happens in your life and I think we all should be a part of making decisions about our communities together. You know, those two women show that the real and the biggest impediment to voting is right here and nowhere else. Now imagine this, you come into the hospital by way of the emergency room and you're still here a week later. How do you vote? Well, Karen, we'll let you know that answer today at six. Karen? Very good point. And boy, those women's stories so encouraging. There is no reason to not get out there and cast your vote. Paula Tupman reporting live for us this afternoon. And make sure to stay with Local 4 for all complete election coverage, including live updates at 5 and 6. Watch our live streaming coverage starting at 7 p.m. at clickondetroit.com. And get push alerts with our Click on Detroit app. Make sure to stay with NBC News and Local 4 all evening leading up to live updates tonight at 11.